years with CNN. Larry has talked to everybody who's anybody, but his own story is just as dramatic. His new book, My Remarkable Journey, is in stores now, and trust me, folks, no matter how well you think you know the king, this book will surprise you. Larry King is the man, and he's here right now. Shot call a big baller. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, we've been ethnic. <laughs> No, it's great to be part. This group is, you know, I follow this show, and I get to see all of this. And I think you've, this is a new kind of television, and I love the way you do it. Because you, you don't take you. yourself as a secret, is one, be yourself. Which right. It's the only secret, in, real essence secret in television. And uh, number two is, uh, you don't take yourself that seriously. <laughs> Hey, and you know, too many people in this business today. I'm like, why am I getting into this whole dialogue? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have to. I have been asked to think and I'm making a speech. Do what you do. <laughs> too many people are, are pompous or it's all about them. And uh, that's a danger point to me. Uh, and so I don't like that kind of broad. And so I like this because it's congenial and it works. You got the hookup from Jackie Gleason for an interview of the all time. Hookup. Jackie Gleason befriended me, came to Miami. We really got along. So one day I'm at his house with a bunch of people, and Jackie liked to play these mind games. So he said, uh, I want each of you to tell me in your profession what's impossible. What's impossible? So there's a doctor there, he says to him, what's impossible? The doctor said, in my profession, they'll never make blood in a laboratory. You, blood will always be in your body, but it'll never, we'll never manufacture blood. And he turns to me, what's impossible in your profession? I said, well, Jackie, I, I do a radio show every night, local show from 9 to 12. Frank Sinatra's coming in to open at the Fonovalu next week. Frank Sinatra to do my show from 9 to 12. This is 1964. Frank Sinatra did not do interviews, and he was larger than life. I, and Jackie, if he would do my show, that's impossible. And Jackie did. What night is he dark? What night don't he work? I said, next Monday. You got him, pal. Wow. I said, what? You got him. You thought Jackie was drinking. I, oh, he said, Jackie, you, you, you got him. Give me the dress. Station. I said, I'm going to plug it. Go plug it. So I go on the air that night. This next Monday, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> so that the phones are ringing. The station management calls me in. You got Frank Sinatra? <laughs> I said, well, he told me. Well, we've called the hotel, <laughs> and he don't return the calls. And we're promoting it. We're going to take a full-page ad in the newspaper. Are you sure he's coming? I said, Jackie said he's coming. Now it's the night of the show. And I'm breathless, and I'm scared. And nobody went home from the radio station. Just secretaries wait. Everybody's waiting. And it's 9 o'clock, I go on 5 after 9. One minute to 9, a limo pulls up. Ooh. Frank gets out, and Jim Mahoney, his publicist, gets out. He's still living, Jim. Mahoney comes up the stairs. Frank comes up the stairs. Frank says, who's Larry King? <laughs> I go, I go. I said, okay, let's do it. We go into the studio. Mahoney says to me, I don't know how you got this, but I get paid not to put him on the air. <laughs> we sit down, and here's what I learned, what I learned a long time ago. is valuable in broadcasting. Always be honest. Mm -hmm. So my first question was, why are you here? <laughs> Not, hey, it's my old friend, Jack Frank yeah. Why are you here? And he says, uh, four years ago, I was working at Ben Maxick's Town and Country Club in Brooklyn. It was closing night, and I had laryngitis. I couldn't go on. I called Jackie. I said, Jackie Gleason, would you come and do a show? And he came, and he entertained him. I walked him out to his limo, and I leaned in, and I said, Jackie, I owe you a favor. Now, it's four years later. I check into the Fontainebleau Hotel. I get a message to call Jackie Gleason. I call him. I said, Jackie, it's Frank. What can I do for you? And Jackie said, Frank, this is the favor. Wow. Oh, when we come back, I want you to tell us about the moment when you actually thought you might leave CNN. Hi, Larry 
King has packed a lot of living into his 75 years, five children, eight marriages, and he's dated more famous and beautiful women than most men meet in a lifetime. You can read all about it in his new book, My Remarkable Journey. That just sold a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you took your son back to New York uh, and where you grew up, uh, where the old stadium used to be. Uh, and, and it sort of caused me to think about the issue of fatherhood and fathers and children. That's what baseball is. And you wrote, over the years, so many people came forward to try to fill the hole left behind by my father. I don't know if they could sense what I lost. It's a good question, but in the beginning, the emptiness was not filled by a man. Your daughter, Kaya, later said, one of the reasons, she said, I think my father's experiences all relate back to when he lost his father at such a young age. What is that relationship that exists between a father and a son, and how has it helped you with your raising your children? Well, it's very special. I was very hurt when he died. I was very close to him. They'd lost a son before I was born from a burst appendix when he was six years old, and I came along like a year later, and then later, three years later, my younger brother. And I was very close to him. He got me interested in baseball. He, he, it was part of his life. I remember his voice. I remember how he looked. I remember his laugh. And then one day he died. You were nine. I was nine. I was coming home from the library. I was carrying nine books. I was a bookworm. I <laughs> went to school. I was good. And when the cop, a cop came down the stairs, they knew my father, and he told me, and all the books went flying. I never, never got interested in school again. I got mad. I didn't go to the funeral. And I took it as anger. I was angry at him for leaving me. It was a bad age, nine, to lose a father. Very bad age. And uh, I, ne I, it, I think it embedded me to this day. As it affects me with the little boys, well, I'm much more attached to them. I'm, I'm very aware that I may, I'm going to leave them. So they think about it. My 10-year-old especially. The older ones, I don't think. But the 10-year-old, he worries about how you're feeling, where yeah. you're going, when you're coming back. Don't go. You know, it would be a tough blow to him. He's, he's more attached to me than the 9-year-old. I mean, they're both attached. Right. The 9-year-old is really attached. I mean, really. But the 10-year-old so is... But you talk about it with them. Oh, yeah. Obviously. I'm very open. They know. They know. The, the little one, Cannon, his middle name is Eddie. That was my father's mm -hmm. name. But I got so attached that I'm, you know, I take them to school in the morning, pick them up in the afternoon. And of course, I had that incident with my 10-year-old Little League game. I got thrown out. <laughs> An umpire threw me out, a grown man. Can you imagine? And Larry, you, you missed the call. Yeah, you, you said oh, you he were right. Still missed, I almost broke my hand. He still missed the call. Larry, you, you know what he told me, the umpire? Go back to CNN. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got your, your beautiful boys and a beautiful wife. And, of course, you write in the book so openly about eight marriages to seven women. Are, are you ever sensitive about that when people talk about that, all the wives? Uh, I'm, I'm not anymore. Uh, I really was only loved three of them, in love with three of them. Uh, the others were, some were brief, some were very brief. Some, uh, one was an old. I think that what you like at 40 is not what you like at 50. Well, it's true. I mean, I the, uh, things change, people change. In fact, the but only constant... you can constant, grow together. The only, yeah. That's right. The only constant in life is change. So I think it's hard. Now, this past marriage is my longest to Sean. I'm married for 12 years. And, uh, Mazel tov. And, and I'm, <laughs> I got a funny line I use with her. I know you got a break, so I'll give it to you. When people see me and they see her and the two little boys, I know what they're thinking. <laughs> I know what they're thinking. So I always put them at ease. I tell them the same thing. If she dies, she dies. <laughs> Folks, that Stop is for it for us, but trust me, you want to pick up this book. It is a wonderful book. Uh, Larry King, My Remarkable Journey. Larry, we certainly enjoyed is it. Is this the end of the show, uh, by the way? This it is. is. Uh, this what's is the, what's, what's coming up now? Well, of course, have folks, you have a great weekend. What's coming up next is Larry King Live. Let's now, save it, right Larry. Let's do help it. us wrap it up. This okay. is what we say. Hi! <laughs> Thank you.